Wikipedia Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and today we're going to go over the application class. Now to start off with we're going to go with the application.run in background. Now what this does is makes your application run even when it doesn't have focus. So if you've ever made a web game with Unity and if you notice that when you alt tab out the game stops running until you alt tab back in. Uh, certain games, uh, if you're making some sort of action game, basically any non-turn based game, uh, you, you want the game to keep running even when the user isn't looking at the web browser. So using the application to run in background and setting it to true will allow that. So let's quickly create a game object and a script. I'm going to be using C Sharp. We'll call this script application class demo. Actually, I'm going to use mono development for this. So if you've never, if you've always used Unitron, but you've been thinking about switching over to Visual Studios or you've been trying out mono development, uh, you can just simply click in the assets or assets drop down menu, click Sync Visual Studio Project, and what that will do will actually make a project file for you. I'm going to be opening mono development. And here we go. Here's my class. I I was working on something earlier, so it, it actually opened it up the last script I had open, but this is what you'll get. So to demonstrate the application running background, let's just create a simple timer. And we'll show how it runs without the running background, and then we'll show how it runs with it. So we're going to start off with creating a private int counter. Uh, private int float. Whoops, what am I doing? Private float delay and a private bool tick. We're going to our start method and initialize these. So counter will equal zero. That's just going to display the seconds as they go by. Add the delay will equal 1.0F. Now what that F means is that we have the delay assigned as a float, but if you don't put the F there, it's going to think it's a double and it's going to cause a few errors. So just make sure that when you're dealing with floats, you put an F there. And our tick, which will set defaults. Now let's make the actual timer method. So private I enumerator, it's going to be a coroutine, so you're going to want to use the I enumerator for the return type. Uh, we'll just call it pause. It's not going to accept any values because we made the delay global. Now, what you want to do is go tick equals true. So we're going to switch the tick to true. And we're going to want to yield return new weight for seconds the length. Now what this does is it, base, it allows the rest of your program to run while it's waiting. So you're going to yield and return. We're just going to return an I enumerator. And it's going to tell it how long to wait, which is our delay, which we have set to one second. Now after that's done, we're going to want to increase our counter and set tick to false again. Now let's quickly make a GUI display. So public on GUI. Now we're just going to do a simple GUI label to display this. Now in C sharp you have to put the new before the rec. Uh, in JavaScript you don't have to. So we're just going to put it 10 from the left, 10 from the top. We'll make it 100 wide and 20 tall. Now we got to put a string in. So since we're going to be using counter and it's a type int, we'll want to convert that to a string, but it's pretty easy in C sharp. So you just go counter, then invoke its string method. Now will convert it to a string for you. Close that off. Now if we were to actually run this, it will uh, just display zero because we never actually call the counter yet. So let's take a quick look at that. We have an error. Oops, I forgot to set. You need to open up 
uh, mono development what I have in there, but let's take a look. It's on line 22. Uh, line 22. I forgot the return type, so we'll just do a void. I'll take care of that. We'll drag our class onto that game object we created. Oh, we didn't name it. Application class demo. Now, let's do it again. Drag it on, put it up there. Click it, make sure it's there. Hit play. And there you go. It just displays a zero. But let's actually have it count. So we'll just go into the update function and we'll say if not tick. And what that basically means is if tick is equal to false, then we're going to start coroutine. If I spell it right. And then the coroutine I want to start. We only have one, which is pause. So if we save that off, hit play, it should count. So every second, roughly a second anyway, it's going to increase by one. Now this is where the running background comes in. If you were to build this out, we'll do build setting, web player, build, uh, we'll just call it running background. If you were to open this up in a web player, I'm going to open this in Firefox. You'll notice you know, it keeps ticking. But if I were to put something in front of it so it doesn't have focus, we'll try to capture this as it ticks. So 7, 8. You notice how it stops ticking because it's not the frontmost screen. It doesn't have focus. If I were to click back on it, it just simply continues from where it was. Now this may not be the behavior you want. So there's an easy way to fix that. And we're going to do it in our awake method. So public void awake, which is another built-in Unity function. And we're going to say application dot run in back ground equal to true. So no error showed up. Let's do another build. We'll replace the old one. If we were to open it up again, so as you can see, it's ticking away. Let's put our window in front of it. And you notice it just keeps ticking. So that's how you use the application running background. Uh, we're going to add it outside. Uh, if you're by default, it's set to false. So if you don't put this line in your code, you're basically still saying application dot running background equals false. But if you want the game to actually run while the user does not have it as the active window, just make sure you set it to true. And I'll see you in the next tutorial.